Welcome back to our next video for our statistical inference for two samples chapter. We're going to now continue with the rest of this flow chart that we were discussing. So we previously did this side. We previously found out that when my variance is known for both populations, I use my Z statistic formulas for those two populations. So when the variance is not known, then we have to get into some T statistic formulas. So if my variance for both populations is not known, that is when I'm going to come onto this branch right here. In order to proceed, I'm going to ask myself, are my variances equal? So they're not necessarily known, but usually we can assume or we can be told that they'll be equal or they will be different. So once again, we have another branch of our flow chart. So if the variances are equal, then we're going to extend over here. So we are going to use some t-statistic formulas for two populations, and the formulas then are these in your book. We then will finish this branch in our next video. We've covered all the formulas for when I know the variance of multiple populations. However, when I don't know the variance, that's when I have to start getting into some t-value formulas. So when we first introduced the t-value statistic, we said that the t-statistic was used in hypothesis testing in cases where the population variance is unknown. So now we are then going to take this and apply the t-value test to multiple populations. We need to modify the t-statistic to utilize the sample variances that are calculated for each sample. And these sample variances are combined as a weighted sum, which is also called a pooled estimator. Don't worry, we'll talk through all of these. I'm just giving you an overview. So there are two variations of this modified t-statistic. One for the case where the sample variances are the same, and another for the case when the sample variances are different. So the first thing we're going to talk about is when my variances are equal. So we're going to be using t-statistic formulas for when my variances are equal. So if the sample variance is the same for both samples, the t-statistic takes the following form. So pay attention here that the number of samples can be different. So I have this beautiful formula. So I have t equals the difference in my sample averages minus the difference in my population averages, all over my pooled standard deviation times the square root of one over my first sample size plus one over my second sample size. Okay, so this also has a nickname of the pooled t-test. So when doing a t-test, we can't forget to talk about degrees of freedom because that's a whole column in my t-table. So the degrees of freedom for this case are calculated as follows. So I have n1 plus n2 minus the number 2. So my first sample size plus my second sample size minus the number 2. And keep in mind degrees of freedom are just the number of values in my final answer that can vary. So let's talk about this thing we keep calling the pooled estimator. So the term S sub P is a pooled estimator, which is a weighted sum of the variances based on the number of observations in each sample. So because my sample sizes can be different, we're going to take a weighted average of my variances given my different sample sizes. So here, my variance, or my pooled estimated variance, is going to equal N1 minus 1 all times my first standard deviation squared, or my first variance, plus my number of values in my second sample size minus one times my second variance, or my second standard deviation squared, all over my degrees of freedom. So n1 plus n2 minus the number two. Okay, so then we can also use these formulas to find two-sided confidence intervals. So, I know, it's a little hairy. So here, I just have the difference in my sample averages minus my t-statistic, given alpha over two is my two-sided confidence interval, and then my comma, my degrees of freedom, all times my pooled standard deviation times this value. Is less than or equal to the difference in my means is less than or equal to that same value, except it's plus right there. So the difference in my means has to be greater than or equal to this side and less than or equal to this side. That's all this is saying. So once again, we want to find out our whole goal in all this nasty calculating is to figure out how different these means are away from each other. So let's look at an example. 
So this is an example where my variances are unknown and my standard deviations are the same. So Owens Lawn Care Incorporated manufactures and assembles lawn mowers that are shipped to dealers throughout the United States and Canada. Two different procedures have been proposed for mounting the engine on the frame of the lawn mower. The question is, is there a difference in the meantime to mount the engines on the frames of the lawn mowers? The first procedure was developed by longtime Owens employee Herb Wells, designated as Procedure 1. And the other procedure was developed by Owens employee William Atkins, which is designated as Procedure 2. To evaluate the two methods, it was decided to conduct a time and motion study. So a sample of five employees was timed using the Wells method with a standard deviation of 2.92 and a sample of six was timed using the Atkins method with a standard deviation of 2.10. The results in minutes are shown on the right. So in this table right here we have a summary of how long it takes to put the engine on the framework of a lawnmower. So this method takes this many minutes and this method takes this many minutes in its sample. So is there a difference in the mean mounting times? Use the 0.1 significance level. Okay, so let's see how this works. So first step I'm going to do is state the null and alternative hypotheses. My null hypothesis is that they are going to be equal to each other, or another way of saying that is mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Then my alternative hypothesis would be that they are not equal to each other or that mu1 minus mu2 does not equal zero. Okay, step two, state the level of significance. So they told us in the problem that we're going to use the point one level of significance. I'm writing this out in detail, by the way, to just let you see how this would work in a full problem. Okay, step three, find the appropriate test statistic. So because the population standard deviations are not known but are assumed to be equal, we are going to use the pooled t-test. So for those that are saying, wait a minute, on the previous page you told us what the standard deviations are. No, 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 those are sample standard deviations with a sample of like five and six. Those are not representing an entire population for every engine placed on every framework of that type of lawnmower. So those are just small samples. So those are our sample standard deviations. And since we don't have a huge sample, we can't use the central limit theorem. So this is when we move to our t-test. We have a smaller sample size, an unknown variance. So we're going to use our t-statistic. So since the standard deviations are assumed to be equal, we are going to use my pooled t-test. OK, so step four, state the decision rule, meaning when am I going to reject? So I'm going to reject if t is greater than this value of t, or kind of my critical value of my t statistic. So alpha over 2, comma, with my degrees of freedom. Or when t is less than the negative version of this, like my tails. So I'm going to go through and calculate that. So I know since alpha is 0.1, alpha over 2 is 0.05 and then comma, nine degrees of freedom, because N1 is going to be five, and two will be six, so five plus six is 11, minus two is nine, or less than this side. So I'm going to then go to my T table, and I'm going to look up nine degrees of freedom. So I find nine degrees of freedom, and then I find my alpha of 0.05, and where those two intersect is my T value. So that T value then is 1.833. So I plug that in here. So when T is greater than 1.833 or T is less than negative 1.833, I would reject H naught. So for those that are wondering how I can just do that symmetrically like that, remember that the T statistic is a standardized value. And I standardized it about a mean of zero. So this is now on another distribution where my mean is zero and these t values then are these values along the bottom of my distribution. So in this case, those critical values would be 1.833 and negative 1.833. So this is what that distribution would look like. I would reject here when it's smaller than negative 1.833 and reject when it's above positive 1.833. So this is kind of a visual of what's going on.
Okay, so next step, I would compute the actual value of t and then make a decision. So remember the value I found before was just a critical value. It wasn't an actual value. So here I'm going to calculate the pooled sample standard deviation, which is so beautiful and it gives me this value. So 6.222. So I would then calculate the test statistic, or the t statistic in this case, and I would then get a t value of negative 0.662. So let's see what that's like. Negative 0.662 is about right here on this curve. Because that falls in this region between my critical values, I would not reject my null hypothesis. So basically what that means is I could conclude there's no difference in the mean times it would take to mount the engine on a frame using these two different methods. So maybe then you go to the company and say, choose whichever one you like or whichever one costs less money because there isn't a statistical difference between the two. Oh, and for whatever it's worth up here, I used a more accurate standard deviation than I did in the introduction of the problem just to get a more accurate answer. But so this would be the 2.92 standard deviation and this would be the 2.10 standard deviation.